Hey everyone, <laughs> I'm back. Um, apparently my uh, live from last week did not do a very good job recording and so several of you asked me to re-record my live talking about things that you can do this summer to set yourself up. So here I am. We're gonna try, try this again and hopefully it goes well. So I began the live with um, a question and it's actually called The Magic Question and um, I didn't share this then, but it's from a book called The Lazy Ge Genius Way and some of you may know Kendra Adachi. She has a podcast called The Lazy Ge Genius and in her book she has um, principle number three is ask the magic question. And the magic question is simply, what can I do now to make life easier late later? What is something that I can do right now that will help my future self? So that is the question that I asked. And so that's what we're going to address. So I'm going to record this and I don't expect that um, many people will jump on here live because I didn't let anyone know that I was doing this, but since we're re-recording it, you can watch it afterwards. And then if you do have any, any questions about any of the things that I say, you can go ahead and drop it in the uh, posted um, video, in the chat of the posted video, and I will be happy to answer any of those questions. So so let's dive in with what is something that you can be doing now that will help your future self. Now I've been seeing on the app that some of you have already started to homeschool, like you started today or you're going to start this week, um, which is a little bit early for our traditional North American home, um, fam families, um, but sometimes Summer can be long and it is really hot. And so it's a great time to go ahead and get started because you don't really want to be outside in the heat and you can take breaks later on. And so it's not a bad idea. But so for those of you who still have weeks of summer left and you're already starting to think, oh my, school is going to be starting in just a few, like maybe the middle or the end of August or the beginning of September. And so you're thinking, what, what are some things that I could be doing now? So that's what we're going to um, cover. So the first thing that I wanted to suggest, especially if you have kids that are involved in things this summer, such as camps, um, vacation by Bible schools, or maybe you can talk a friend into doing a little swap, like you watch her kids, she can watch yours, and that will give you some time um, to, uh, to do some of these things. So the very first thing is going to be to, to uh, take a look at your space and what are some things that you can do to kind of quiet the space. So you're going to do some decluttering. You're going to analyze the things that you have and decide, is this something that I love? Is this something that I need? Is this something that I use? And if you don't answer yes to any of those questions, then you may want to consider getting rid of it. If it's trash, it's last year's papers and you just don't need them, then you can dispose of them. If it's something that maybe you used but you don't think you'll use again, then you can pass it on. Um, if it is something of value, then you can try selling it. Um, and if it's something that you do think you'll use again, you can store it and then pull it back out when you need it. So let's talk about the categories of things that you'll want to take a look at. So the very first thing, um, I know we just had prime, prime Day and I saw a lot of people talking about school supplies and what they're going to buy. So the very first thing, before you bring in new things, look at the stuff that you already have and evaluate if it is serving you and if you need it. So a lot of times, um, we get so caught up with the new stuff, it's only 10 cents to buy this pack of crayons, but you already have a whole box of crayons. Do you really need new crayons? And if you do, if you wanna splurge and get the new crayons, then consider donating the old crayons um, either to a school, like a lot of you know underprivileged schools will accept old crayons because maybe their students don't have anything, uh, or possibly your children's program at church, they may take some of your things because they may do crafts with those crayons, like melt them down and make um, candles or, you know, multicolored crayons by melting them into, into a solid round um, crayon. So anyway, take a look at the things that you have. Um, is the glue dried up? Is your glue stick all just kind of shriveled? Um, are you out of tape? 
do your scissors cut? Like do an evaluation, see what you have, see, see what's still good, take inventory, and then from that you can decide if you need to buy some new things with the school sales that are coming up. So that's gonna be the first category of things. Look at what you already have and, and decide from there if you need anything. And if you do, you make your shopping list and you're good to go. Um, thing number two would be your curriculum. So if you're brand new to homeschooling, you don't have any curriculum yet, and that's fine. But if you've been homeschooling a year or two, you may have purchased things. Maybe a friend gave it to you. Maybe you bought some, you went to a used um, curriculum sale and you picked up a few things. Um, maybe you bought something a couple years ago and you used it and you just don't love it and so you know you're not going to use it again then get it out of your home make space for the new stuff because if you haven't purchased your curriculum yet you're going to be having box day and you're going to need room to be able to put your stuff so so go through through those things and again if you have something that you used with say a first grader and you have a four four year old and you know you're going to use it in the future consider storing it somewhere like it doesn't need to live on your shelf if shelf space is limited you can pull that off and box it up and and find a place to hide it under a bed in the top shelf of a closet in a basement in the attic, in the garage, whatever works for you. Um, but less stuff is less stuff to manage is just less stuff to keep up with. So you'll have to pick up less things. So school supplies, curriculum. Third, books. Just general books. Either books for you. Um, I I used to have a really hard time of letting go of books, and I I realized that I can't keep collecting because eventually it was going to be too much. Like I don't have a real library that with a card catalog that I can look, look stuff up. And I know a lot of people do that. And if you have the space, that's great. But even libraries call their stacks and get rid of things that are outdated, that just aren't being checked out. So um, reconsider the books that you have. And like I held on to college, um, textbooks for a long time and I realized I, I don't need these so you know I moved them on um, if you have older kids like your your kids are first second third grade and you don't have any ba babies in anymore you might look at the board books and decide uh, you may want to keep a couple your very fa favorites and then and then share the ones that you no longer use no longer need with a friend who has that age um, child so so look at your your books whether it's books for the kids books for yourself um, Christian Bible stu studies that you may have done you know do you really refer back to them is it something that you're going to use as a resource if it is great but if it's not if it's a notebook that you fill filled in and you're like why am I holding on to this let it go recycle it uh, and if it's a resource book that um, you can share with with someone or even don't donate to the library for their friends of the library sale you know that's that's a great thing so you can let some of that stuff go uh, the other thing the next cat category that I want to suggest is look at your your surfaces your um, tchotchkes uh, my mom likes to call them dust collectors. So how how much of that do you love? How much of it is necessary? And would it be better if you quieted your, your space by um, removing some of that? So whether it's pictures, maybe you can put them on a wall and make a collage um, or a, what's that called? A, um, gallery wall with your pictures instead of having them on your sur surfaces. If it's just decorations that you've had for a while, but maybe it's time for them to go, let them go. The less stuff you have, the less visual clutter you have, the more peaceful you, you and your kids will feel. It's really amazing. I've been doing a ton of traveling this summer and I've been staying in vacation rental homes, um, hotels for work, and when, when I first walk into a hotel, it is so calming because there's nothing on any of the surfaces except for lamps and a television and maybe a telephone. And that's it. There, there are no decorations. There's nothing and until I unpack all my stuff. Um, but so consider getting rid of some of, of those things as well. Um, the other thing is toys. 
uh, it seems like, you know, there's always an influx of toys. There's birthdays, there's Christmas, there's just because, there's rewards, there's grandparents. Uh, so that is another great thing uh, during the summertime to be able to either invite your kids in if they are willing and, and actually helpful, um, to be able to decide what they want to keep and what they want to bless someone else with and broken things to just throw out. Or maybe when they are away at vacation Bible school or camp or grandma's or whatever, uh, maybe you can go through and decide for them. You can tell what they don't play with. It's in the very, very back of the closet or at the bottom of the toy bin or under the bed. And you can pull, pull those things out. And if they've just forgotten them, then maybe you put away, you hide uh, some of the toys that they've been playing with kind of recently and you showcase things that they may have forgotten about or um, you you let them continue playing with the stuff that they love right now but you hide those things and then in a few months when they're bored with their current toys you can pull those out but of course if they're aging out of them and you don't have young younger kids then just move it on out pass it on pass it on just get it out um, then the other thing is when you do get your uh, your books, your order, if you place your order with sunlight and you have your box day, now you have new things that you have to decide what to do with. So one of the things that you could do during the summertime that will set you up well is to figure out what kind of organization um, you want to do. So if you've been homeschooling and, and you've worked out something that has worked well for you, great. You can just implement your new books into that space or into that arrangement. If you're brand new to homeschooling, then uh, then that's something that you're going to need to figure out. How are you going to handle your materials as they come in? Are you going to, to assign a bookshelf and have, um, this is gonna be our school bookshelf, and put all your books there? Are you going to have cubbies or baskets or rolly carts or bins? Like how are you going to organize your things? And then start to implement that. As you unpack your boxes um, and you check off your uh, sheet that you know, your purchase order sheet and you make sure you have everything uh, and then you organize by subject. These are the history books, these are the Bible books, these are the science, science books and figure out how you're going to store the materials if you have shelf space and you you can have it out great but if you live in a small home and you can't you can box the things back up except for the first few weeks and pull those out and um and put those in whatever uh space you're going to keep them in another thing you can do related to your curriculum your new stuff is to put together your instructor's guide so if you did not pay for sunlight to put it together for you, then you will be building your instructor's guide. It is not difficult to do. It really is not. It just takes a little time and some space. Um, either a big dining room table, I would often spread out on the floor. You can even put something on, a little show on or an audiobook. Um, and put that together. If you did have some might put it together for you, then you may want to take some time and look through it and familiarize yourself. What is in this big binder? What do I do with this? So look through all the tabs, figure out what's in the appendices, what's going to be helpful for you back there. Um, and maybe if you have the time, spend a little time reading the introductory pages of the instructor's guides and the week one the week one pages is where sunlight will describe like how to do something so whether um this is this is what these symbols mean the mapping symbol the timeline symbol um things like note symbol things like that they will explain that uh, they are going to explain like the overarching view of the bible curriculum for that year like these are the things you're going to be covering and these are the goals uh, they're going to explain how the spelling or copy work works and why we do it and how to do it. So all of that will be in either the introductory pages or the week one pages. So get some sticky notes and highlighter pens and make, make some notes for yourself. Highlight things that you want to be able to quickly flip back and find again. 
Um, so spend some time that will that way when you're ready to start school you already know what everything is and you can get start started with just pulling the books and doing the re reading for the for the day um, lastly the last thing I wanted to talk about is um, look at what you think your fall schedule is going to look like so you know if your kids are going to be playing soccer have you gotten that soccer ske schedule yet when is practice night um, when do games start um, are they doing any kind of music lessons and what days are those or art classes what days are those and that way you can kind of frame out what a week is going to look like and then think about how are you going to prepare for for those days so on really busy days if you're in a co-op if you're going to so soccer practice or whatever then you're going to want quick and easy meals so you can start thinking about meal plan planning and maybe coming up with a matrix a little plan um, we often would do that we had a meal matrix that we would loosely fo follow i wasn't le legalistic about it but it did help me to um, keep my meals var varied and try new things and not just get stuck in a rut. Um, so we had like pasta Monday because pasta is quick and easy and, and Mondays were a busy day for us. Um, our fam family loves Taco Tuesday even now and it's not the same kind of taco. We might do chicken tacos, we might do carnitas, we might do chorizo, you know, it's going to be different but it's going to be some kind of a taco night. Um, Wednesdays we used to meet at church so church would provide a meal but um, our church isn't providing a meal anymore so you know that's going to be different and uh, Thursdays was a soccer practice night so I often did a crock pot meal so think about all the different ways that you can cook and and just start thinking about your your fa family's favorite meals um, what they are making a list of them and then maybe some things that you may want to introduce so those were my ideas for things that you could be doing during the summertime to set you up well for the fall. Thanks for joining me, and if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the chat. Take care.